born in Brooklyn, raised in New Jersey. Uh, did my medical school training at Rutgers in New Jersey. Neurosurgical residency was at the University of Connecticut. Did a fellowship as well at uh, Tampa General. I've been practicing neurosurgery in Florida for 24 years. Um, I'm chief of neurosurgery at Delray Medical Center and I'm on the staff at Boca Regional and I have the privilege of working at uh, Sperling Medical doing focused ultrasound. Long story, my dad had polio when he was a youngster and so it was either orthopedics or neurosurgery. And I did orthopedics for a while and uh, actually did orthopedic rotation down at Jackson Memorial and realized I hated orthopedics. And uh, my advisor was a retired neurosurgeon. And so with a twinkle in his eye, when I told him I hate orthopedics, he said, I have something for you to do. And uh, I went and saw my uh, two brain tumors being removed by a colleague of his. And that was in 1982. And that was it. I was sunk forever. And I've been a neurosurgeon ever since. Many developments, some that integrate with what we do here. Um, we have the ability to display the fiber tracts within the brain. So the roadmap that we used to joke about that we love if we have one, we now actually do have one. It can help us plan the procedures that we do. Um, we have the ability to make some tumors glow in the dark, literally. And by seeing it better, do a better job resecting it. So. Uh, Neurosurgery has always been fun, but now it's a blast. It's less the neurosurgery and more the patient. I mean, if you see the patients that we work on, the patients that have been, um, I won't say devastated, but robbed of a good portion of their life by movement disorders, and you restore part or all of that life to them, they are the most grateful people that you will ever have the opportunity to meet. They, they talk about an ear-to-ear -ear grin when somebody looks at a hand that's been shaking for the past 15 or 20 years, and they literally, they, they, they look at it. There's a, like it's a new friend that they are just meeting again because they haven't seen it not shake in that long. Um, we have uh, usually after the day of them being in the machine and not eating, they're hungry, and we give them a bowl of soup, which when, if we really thought about it, we probably wouldn't do, because one of the hardest things for them is eating that bowl of soup. In fact, they couldn't when they came in, and they could when they leave. It's dramatic. It, it's truly Remarkable. When I was trained, I'm, I'm a movement disorder surgeon, so I do deep brain stimulation. I did the earlier versions of what we do here now, so pallidotomies and thalamotomies using electrodes that were passed into the brain that basically burned a small spot or made a lesion within the brain. And when I was trained, the person that trained me, the first case that I saw was a thalamotomy. And, um, as the tremor stopped, he looked over his glasses at me and he said, now that's neurosurgery. So um, this is just, this is an evolution of what we've been doing for 40 or 50 years. Uh, it was done with electrodes and heat, and then it was done with stimulation, and it's been done with different ways to target an area within the brain without making a hole in the skull like the gamma knife. Um, those are ways of using radiation. This is not radiation. This is sound waves. It's about as benign as you can get, but it's using it in an elegant fashion where it's creating heat and creating a lesion without using radiation, and our long-term hope is that this will be the safest of all of the efforts that have been made to do this.